So I wanted to do one more thing with these truth table videos. I've done a couple more on the tutorial side, but I thought from the student perspective, it might help to see something that might be more like what you'd see on a test and sort of walk you through the problem from the very start to the very finish. So that's what I'm gonna do with this video. This one's gonna be a two variable example, and then I'll make a three variable example after this. The question that I'm gonna solve is this guy here, which may or may not be how the question that you see on a test would be written. These truth table questions that can be written a variety of different ways. I think the two most common are kind of symbolically like you see here or more in English where this is translated to Q if and only if not P or not Q. The English language lacks a little bit in specificity. There's a little bit of ambiguity over here. So this is actually a preferable way to write this, but I think this way might be more common. So I wanted to show it both ways. The problem with this where it lacks in specificity is this last little bit down here. This can be interpreted as either not P or not Q, or it can be interpreted as not P or not Q. And maybe that pause kind of helps you see the difference between the two. Those two would give you different answers. You'd interpret this the way this is written, but I think there's at least a little bit of room for ambiguity there. At any rate, if you're given either one of these two questions, what you'd wanna do is start to set up your truth tables. So the variables involved here are the letter P and the letter Q. So those will be the headings for two of my different columns. And then I'm gonna end up with four rows here because if you have two variables, you'll always end up with four rows. It's because two times two equals four. Often these test problems will start with these columns already filled in for you, but just in case they're not, I want to show you how you could fill them in. The order that you write them isn't really important as long as you make sure that you list each of the four possibilities, but the most common order these are written in is you start with true, true, and then you write true, false, and then you write false, true, and then you write false, false. And since a lot of people were asking like, how am I ever gonna remember this? How do I know what order to write them in? Well, one way you can think about this is that you have to pay for your falses for whatever reason you're paying every time you see an F. In order to get this most common order of the T's and the F's, what you wanna do is make the cheapest thing $1, the variable that's furthest to the right. And then as you go to your variables further left, in this case, there's only two, but I'll repeat this in the next example where I have a three variable case, you always wanna double the dollar amount. So in this case, Q's are $1, P's are $2. If I had another letter out here, it would be $4. If I had another letter after that, it'd be $8. Start with $1 for the variable as far right as you can, and then double as you move to the left. And again, what you're doing is you're paying for the F's. So if you don't have any money at all, you can't buy any F's at all, so these are both gonna be T's. If you only had $1, well, you can't afford a $2 F, so all you're gonna do is buy this $1 F. I'm gonna put an F right here. If you have $2, well, now you can buy one of these $2 Fs, but it costs your whole $2, so you don't have any money left. You can't buy another F over here. You just have the single F here. And then finally, if you have $3, well, you could buy one of the $2 ones and one of the $1 ones, so you'd get Fs in both places. This isn't something that's commonly used. I don't know that I'd recommend writing this on your test or anything. You wrote these dollar signs, your teacher would have no idea what you're talking about. It's just something that I made up to try to explain to people the most common order these are written in. And it probably seems like overkill. You're like, yeah, I get the point. I can just memorize these four rows right here. But in the case when we have more than two variables, it's a little bit more challenging. And this method will scale to more variables. What you wanna do next is start to add additional columns, but you don't wanna just add any column. You wanna add the columns that'll be helpful for you to figure out the problem. So looking at these problems, I first wanna determine which variables are negated. So what I'm saying is I have a not P here and a not Q here. So what I will need is both a not P column and a not Q column. And you can either get that from here and here, or you can get that from here and here. And as we saw in previous videos, the negation columns are the easiest columns. All you gotta do to fill out the not P column is look at your P column. It makes sense because not P refers to P and just copy the opposite of what you see here. So if you see a T over here, you put an F here. You see a T right here, put an F here. You see an F over here, you put a T here. You see an F over here, you put a T here. Similarly for not Q, all I have to do is negate the Q column. So now I'm completely ignoring this column and just looking at this column and writing the opposite letter that I see. So there's a T here, there must be an F here, there's an F here, there must be a T here. T's change to F's and F's change to T's. Now that I have all my negations done, I wanna look for other conjunctions. So what I'm saying is the not P and the not Q are put together by this little symbol here. This is the or symbol as I wrote over here. The way I remember that is it's really easy to confuse this guy with one of those upside down. The one that's upside down kind of looks like an N, which kind of sounds like and. So I remember that the N looking one is and, and this one therefore must be the or. At any rate, the next column that I want would be not P or not Q, the stuff that's underlined in pink. And you could write it symbolically or you could write it in English, whichever you want. And to fill out this column, all you gotta remember is what the or conjunction means. 
And what the OR conjunction means is you gotta put a T in this column if you have a T in either this column or in this column, if you have at least one T in the two columns that are referenced. So be careful here, you're not looking over at P and Q because P and Q are not what are connected by this OR symbol. It's the not P and the not Q that are connected by this OR symbol. So I'm gonna look at these two columns in green and just ask myself the question, do I see a T in either this column or this column? No, I don't, they're both Fs. So therefore this one's an F over here. What about down here? Yeah, you got one right here. Doesn't matter that this one is not also a T because I just need one in this column or in this column. So once I see at least one T, I put a T over here. Similarly here, because I have at least one T, we'll put a T here. Here I have two T's, more than I even need, but that's fine. As long as I have at least one, I put a T in this column. One more column and then we'll be done. The last conjunction, the only one we don't have accounted for so far, is this double-sided arrow right here, this if and only if symbol. Note that what if and only if is connecting is Q, which is a column that already exists, and then not P or not Q, which is another column that already exists. So that's a good trick for helping you figure out which order you're gonna write these columns in. You always wanna pick a conjunction that connects together two things that you already have columns for. So or connects together not P and not Q, Whereas if and only if connects together Q and this entire thing in parentheses, not P or not Q. So I couldn't have done the if and only if before I did the or because one of the arguments for this if and only if symbol is all this stuff in pink. I just noticed that I switched all the lowercase to uppercase letters as I'm filling these out. There's no significance to capitalizing these or not. So for this if and only if operation, what we first need to do is make sure that we have the two columns that are referenced by it. So again, Q and this column, which I think we do have. Here's the Q column, and here's the not P or not Q column. And if and only if, you can kind of think about it like an equal sign almost. You're gonna put a T here if this is the same as this. And if this is not the same as this, well then you're gonna put an F here, that's it. So for this first row, I first compare what I see in the Q column, which is the letter T, with what I see in this pink column, the not P or not Q column, which is the letter F. And since this T is not the same as this F, I'm gonna put an F right here. Then I go down to my next row, I got an F right here and I got a T right here. Those two things are not the same, so I'm gonna put an F right here. And I go down to my third row. I got a T right here and I have a T right here. Those are the same, so I'm gonna put a T right here. And then finally my fourth row, I got an F here and a T here. They're not the same, so I'm gonna put an F here. It's worth pointing out that if I had an F here and an F here, I would have put a T here because the F is the same as the F. They don't both need to be equal to T's to get a T here. They just both need to be the same as each other to get a T over here. So the final answer for this truth table example would be this column that you see right here, FFTF. It's worth pointing out that if you wrote these in different orders, if you started with TT and then wrote FT and then TF and then FF, these would be in different orders. As far as I'm concerned, it's correct. I think you have the freedom to put these in any order you want, but I can just tell you that any teacher is gonna write them in this order. So if your teacher's really picky and wants these in a given order, the order that they probably want them in will be corresponding with what you see over here. And a shortcut for getting there is this $1, $2 trick.